Elon Musk's secretive company Neuralink is developing brain-machine interfaces, and the company has showed off the technology it has been working on to the public recently for the first time, and it is insane. According to Musk, Neuralink brain chips will be able to cure paralyzed people, and it's amazing. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Evolution, where we tell you all the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. In today's video, we're going to talk about how these brain chips actually work, and how it's going to fully recover paralyzed people. If you want to find out more, then stay with us until the end of the video. Also, before we start the video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And let's get started. Neuralink was founded by Musk and a team of engineers and scientists in the year 2016, with the aim of bringing something new to the world, and the company unveiled wired version of its implant technology in 2019. It had several modules that included electrodes, which were connected to a USB port in the skull, and this port was intended to be wired to an external battery and radio transmitter that were located behind the ear. The latest version of brain chips consists of a single integrated implant that fits in a hole in the skull and relays data through the skin via Bluetooth radio. This wireless design of the new version makes it seem much more practical for human use. However, it limits the bandwidth of data that can be sent, compared with state-of-the-art brain-computer interfaces. Musk has stated several times that the main goal of the Neuralink is to solve problems related to spine and brain in human with a seamlessly implanted device. This is a big step towards the future as it will merge humans with artificial intelligence. Neuralink's efforts show decades of hard work by the researchers and scientists in the field of brain-computer interfaces. However, it's not the first time someone has worked with brain chips. First proposed in the 1970s, brain-machine interfaces have already achieved a lot over the decades. Initial versions let people move virtual cursors, and more recent ones allow for full control of mechanical arms. As of today, the only FDA-approved BMI is the Utah Array, a 1mm implant with 100 electrodes that can capture and stimulate brain cells. This array is currently on clinical trials as a treatment for several different diseases. About a decade ago, Brown University scientists David Borton and Arto Nermiko and their colleagues developed a wireless neurosensor which was capable of recording neural activity in pigs and monkeys. So in 2016, the researchers found out that this technology can be used to make the paralyzed monkeys walk again. Nermiko stated about this, Neuralink, with a lot of creativity, has been able to cut and paste a lot of stuff that the field has developed. He also said that the technology they have used may not be unique, but it might have a robust future in terms of actually getting into humans. Musk and his engineers at Neuralink are devoting significant resources to this project, and according to Professor of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering at Columbia University, Ken Shepard, it's an extremely well-funded, focused effort. They said that they have 100 people working on this. That's a level of resources that is pretty impressive to work on something like this. I think that gives them a real advantage over other groups. So let's now talk about the design of this chip. The very first unique thing about these chips is the flexible threads used in them, which are less likely to damage the brain than the materials being currently used in brain-machine interfaces. These threads also create the possibility of transferring a higher volume of data. According to the white paper credited to Elon Musk and Neuralink, the system could include as many as 3,072 electrodes per array, which are distributed across 96 threads. The threads are 4 to 6 micrometers in width, which makes them considerably thinner than a human hair. In addition to developing the threads, Neuralink's another big advance is a machine that automatically embeds them. Scientists from Neuralink are hoping to use laser beams to get through the skull, instead of drilling holes to fit the chip. Musk has revealed in the presentation that he wants to achieve symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Therefore, he wants to create a technology that allows merging with the artificial intelligence. It's not going to be suddenly Neuralink will have this neural lace and start taking over people's brains, Musk said. The first person with spinal cord paralysis to receive a brain implant that allowed him to control a computer cursor was Matthew Nagel. In 2006, Nagel played Pong using only his mind. The basic movement required took him only four days to master. Since then, paralyzed people with brain implants have also brought objects into focus and moved robotic arms in labs as part of scientific research. The system Nagel and others have used is called BrainGate and was developed initially at Brown University. So if the alternative of BrainGate that has been presented by Musk becomes functional, it may be a substantial advance over older technology. BrainGate relied on the Utah Array, which is a series of stiff needles allowing up to 128 electrode channels. 
If we compare that technology with Neuralink's brain chips, then BrainGate was picking up less data and its needles were also stiffer than Neuralink's threads. This is a huge problem for long-term functionality because the brain shifts in the skull, but the needles of the array don't, so it can lead to a major brain damage. Therefore, the thin polymers proposed by Neuralink may help solve this problem. Furthermore, Neuralink's technology is more difficult to implant than Utah Array, mostly because it's more flexible. To deal with the problem, the company has come up with a neurosurgical robot which is capable of inserting six threads per minute. According to the company's white paper, it looks something like a cross between a microscope and a sewing machine. The paper also says that this robot avoids blood vessels, so it will help with the inflammatory response in the brain. For Musk, the central problem of interacting with AI is actually bandwidth. You can take in information much more quickly than you can push it out via your voice or your thumbs, but you're already connected to a machine. Hence, his goal is for the system to allow humans to communicate with machines directly more quickly from their brains. Finally, the paper says that the company has developed a custom chip that is better able to read, clean up, and amplify the signals from the brain. For now, the chip can only transmit data using a wired connection, but the ultimate goal is to create a system that can work wirelessly. The wireless chip will be embodied in a product that Neuralink calls the N1 sensor, designed to be embedded inside a human body and transmit the data wirelessly. Now let's talk about the success of this project and where it's still lacking. Neuralink recently performed an experiment on a monkey named Pager using brain-machine interface. The monkey's brain signals were sent wirelessly by an implanted device, and according to the video released, Pager was playing a video game called Pong with his mind. The goal of this experiment was to allow people with neurological conditions to control phones or computers remotely. One expert said the fact no wires were used represented significant progress, but more data was needed. The macaque monkey named Pager was first taught to play the video game with a joystick and was rewarded with a fruit smoothie. During this process, the Neuralink device recorded the information about which neurons were firing to control which movements. Then the joystick was disconnected, leaving the monkey to control gameplay with its mind only. According to the researchers, our mission is to build a safe and effective clinical BMI brain-machine interface system that is wireless and fully implantable. Our first goal is to give people with paralysis their digital freedom back, to communicate more easily via text, follow their curiosity on the web, to express their creativity through photography and art, and yes, to play video games. The researchers further said that the system could potentially be used to restore physical mobility by using the link to read the signals in the brain, which can then be used to stimulate nerves and muscles in the body. However, the process will have to be refined further as they said, with the monkey, we calibrate the decoder by mapping neural activity patterns to actual joystick movements. However, we won't be able to use such a strategy for people with paralysis. However, this was not the only experiment performed by the company, as Neuralink previously showed a video of a pig called Gertrude with a chip in her brain and a computer tracking her neural activity as she looked for food. Neuralink co-founder Max Hodak is also pretty confident that with the help of this new tech, they can possibly create a new species. He even said that they could probably build a Jurassic Park if they want to by genetically engineering dinosaurs and it would require 15 years of breeding and engineering to get super exotic novel species. Elon Musk's response to the experiment was also bold, as he said the next step of this experiment would enable paraplegics to walk again. Musk tweeted, First Neuralink product will enable someone with paralysis to use a smartphone with their mind faster than someone using thumbs. Musk has stated that they will soon experiment on humans, as he said, We hope to have this in a human patient by the end of next year. And this is it for today guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Do you think this new tech will make paralyzed people walk again? And is Elon Musk actually hinting at building a Jurassic Park next? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And thank you for watching.